This is our dual boot menu. As you can see, we have Xyron at the top and Windows 10 at the bottom. What we want to do is replace Xyron. So that's remove Xyron. And in this case, we'll use Linux Mint to replace it, but keep it in dual boot with Windows 10 still. We've now booted the machine off the Linux Mint USB. So we'll let it get up to the desktop. We'll have a look at the disks utility and that'll show us our drives. So here's our system here. This is our drive and we can see we've got a system partition there for Windows. And you can see it is NTFS. This will be Windows, so we can see Windows is about 120 gigabytes and it's NTFS. We've got an extended partition here, which has under it here or within it is our Linux, which is currently Zorin. We can see it's SDA5. So we'll need to remember that SDA5 and it's about 92 gigabytes. At the end, this is just one of the Windows recovery petitions. So we've got a system petition and a recovery petition there for Windows. This is our Windows, 122 gigabytes. And this is our Zorin, which is SDA5. And this is where we're gonna now install Linux Mint. So remember that number, SDA5. The sizes should also, if they're different or significantly different, you'll be able to tell uh, you don't want to put it in 122 gigabytes. You actually want to put it in the 90 gigabytes. And also the file system, NTFS, is Windows and EXT4. See here, EXT4. EXT4 is Linux. So we know it's SDA5, we know it's 90 gigabytes, and we know it's EXT4. So let's now go and start the installer. Continue, continue again. I recommend choosing these. We'll continue. The installer's detecting that this computer currently has multiple operating systems on it, what would you like to do? Now if we go install Linux Mint alongside them, that's going to make this a triple boot machine and we'll have to choose where we're going to put it and we're going to start running out of space somewhere. So what we're going to do is choose something else because we don't want to triple boot and we don't want to erase everything. So we're going to choose something else down the bottom and we'll continue. This first one, SDA1, is NTFS, so we can tell that's a Windows one. It's about 500 megabytes, and it's a bit hard to see, but there is a little bit of green down the end of this yellow bar at the top. So that will be the one of the Windows system ones. And this very last one down the bottom is NTFS as well. Again, it's about 500 megabytes, and again, it's just barely visible up here on the very end. So that's the uh, the other Windows system one. We know we don't want any of those. Here's our SDA5 extension 4. We can actually see here it says Zorin OS 15. So this will be the one that currently contains Zorin. And what we're going to do is click on it, as I've done there. You can see it's this orange section up the top. You can see the orange is SDA5 extension 4. So we're going to click on change. We're going to change, do not use this petition. I'm going to go up to extension for journaling file system. The mount point in this case, we're just replacing Zorin with Linux Mint. We're not doing anything fancy. So we're just going to choose the forward slash. So that'll put everything into this orange section and it should leave the yellow windows section alone. And we're going to choose to format it because we don't want anything that's currently there. So this means you can lose whatever data was in there before. In this case, it's Zorin OS. 
everything will be gone. So any files that are in your home folders, etc., will be lost in this particular process. We'll choose OK. We get a little warning. So this is the point of no return. So we're going to continue. And now we've got our changes here. So there are SDA 5, it's extension 4. It no longer says Zorin OS over here. We look like we're looking pretty good here. We're going to hit install now. And we'll choose the rest of our uh, options that we want through the uh, rest of the installer. So I've pretty much taken the same settings as I had before. I've probably given it a different name, which I've called WinLin Replace. And I'll continue. As I mentioned before, this is just replacing Zorin with Linux Mint and removing everything that you had in the previous install, being Zorin OS in this case. So all your files that were in there are all lost at this point. This is pretty much just distro hopping from one distro to another, but with a dual boot configuration going on the same machine. We'll let this finish and we'll come back at the end. Installation's complete, we'll restart and we should now have a different boot menu when it starts back up. And you can see we've got a new menu with Linux Mint Cinnamon at the top and our Windows 10 still at the bottom. So let's boot into Linux Mint. We'll log in. Okay, we've logged into Linux Mint. We'll bring up the disks menu again. We can see it looks the same as it did earlier on. We have our Windows system partition over here, 500 megabytes. There's Windows on 122 with NTFS still. This is now our Linux Mint that we're currently in, which we can see down here. We're mounted at file system root. There's the other Windows system partition there of about 500 megabytes. That's just a little bit of free space up the end that hasn't altered at all. We'll boot into Windows. As you can see, we've replaced Zorin OS with Linux Mint in a dual boot configuration without interfering with Windows. Everything works. As usual, you do this at your own risk. And I hope, uh, hope that helps you.